This video we're going to talk about our AutoX tool and kind of give an overview of how the program works. You can see here we have a nice steering wheel hanger with a tool and a set of flip cards. So we can just hang them up here. We're going to kind of walk through some general instructions that are on the first uh, page of the card. So if you walk your way through, we're going to talk about connecting the tool and basically you're going to find the OBD port in the car. Um, each of the different types of videos show generally where these OBD ports are, but they're usually under the dash on the driver's side of the vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one plugged in. All right, once we're plugged in, you can see the tool quickly powers up. I first get a disclaimer that just says I'm using the tool for legal purposes. I'm gonna say okay. We're gonna talk through the buttons next. So we have our okay button, which is a kind of a selection and okay. We have an escape button, which is used uh, kind of like a no sometimes or a go back. And then we have our arrow buttons here. The up and down buttons go up and down one line at a time, and the left and right buttons will go down a page at a time. So you can go quickly through some menus. The function button up here is uh, not used for key programming. So our main screen, you can see we have key program settings, activate and about, and 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to be going straight to key programming. The next section walks us through some programming notes. We recommend that before you start programming, you start the car once and make sure the vehicle starts quickly and easily with the original key. And we recommend that just to make sure you know, that's got a good strong battery and the car starts easily so you don't get confused if there's any problems. Uh, we also recommend you find the security light on the car and there's either a light somewhere on the dash, some of the newer vehicles will say that the key's not present on the display, but somewhere there's a light or a display that lets you know whether there's a good working key in the vehicle or not. So we suggest you find where that is first and understand how it works. Also we recommend you close all doors and generally put on your seatbelt just to make sure there's no additional chimes that distract you or mislead you while you're going through the process so unless you're instructed specifically otherwise you know you should have the doors closed and a seatbelt on. Next we're walking through the general steps which is plug in the tool, select key program, choose your make, you're going to select by vehicle and then choose your model and year then follow whatever instructions are for that particular vehicle. We do have some notes if you find that the year of the, your vehicle is not listed on the tool then you're going to try the nearest year earlier or the nearest year afterwards and one of those will work for the vehicle. Some vehicles have multiple system types listed so you may get to where you're presented with a system type 1 or a system type 2 and our recommendation is just to try the first system type first and if it continues and seems to work then that is the correct type. If it fails to connect or fails to program then simply switch to the other system type. When you go to do a vehicle you're going to flip to the programming instructions for that vehicle and key type. For example, I flipped to Ford Lincoln Mercury keys and what we recommend you do is read through these programming notes. Basically these are hints to help you be successful that you should read and understand ahead of time. If there's anything that's unclear on the tool, our programming guide will explain exactly what you're supposed to do. For example, the tool may say insert a key and turn the vehicle on but it's unclear which key, our programming guide will explain which key is to be used at which step. So as you're using the tool, basically you'll understand what's going on. So our last section in the general instructions is about deleting keys. Basically all vehicles have a predetermined maximum number of keys that can be assigned. It's either four, six, or eight. If a vehicle you're adding a key to is already full and there's no room, then the key will not be able to be added. You know, it'll fail to program. In these cases you can choose an option in the menu to delete all keys, but you have to be careful of a couple things. One is you need to make sure the customer has all of the existing keys present. So when you delete, 
you wipe all keys from the car, their spouse or somebody can't have a key at home. You need to have it present to add back in. Secondly, you want to make sure that there's no aftermarket or dealer installed remote start system because these systems often have a key hidden somewhere behind the dash and when you delete all keys you're going to disable that remote start system. The only types of remote start systems that are safe is it when there's a remote start in the original OEM fob then you know that was a factory installed system and you don't have to worry about deleting keys in those circumstances. And just to reiterate, a dealership installed remote start is not the same as a factory installed remote start. So if a dealership added a remote for you and there's a separate fob, that also has a key typically in the dash that will get wiped out when you do a delete all. So just be careful with that one. Okay, and the last thing I just want to point out is at the end of the guide, there are two sections. One is for our testing instructions, and generally we'll go over testing for each of the specific vehicle videos that we do, so I'm not going to go through that now. But then at the very end, there's a couple of pages of troubleshooting, and I'm not going to go through it in detail, but just to let you know it's there if you need it. There's a section on failed communications when the tool doesn't seem to talk to the car. There's a section on the key or prox programming failing, you know, what you can look for there. There's a section on the remote function of the key failing, and a brief section on what happens if you plug in and the tool doesn't power up. And there's a section on security lockout, and that's rare cases where if you try to start a vehicle multiple times with a key that's not programmed properly, the vehicle might go into a lockout state where it thinks it's being stolen and the original key won't work either. And if you have any of these issues, the troubleshooting guide will help you figure them out. And also, of course, you can call our tech support group at any time and they'll be able to help you as well. And that does it for this video. Thank you.